Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs are known to run quite hot due to the amount of power they use. If you plan on building your own PC with these higher end CPUs, you'll need to have a pretty beefy cooling solution. Now there are plenty of options that are available on the market. I had this all-in-one liquid cooler sent over to me by MSI, and so I thought I'd put it to the test by pairing it with a 13900K. Is this the CPU cooler you should go with if you want to get optimal cooling performance? That's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be checking out the MSI MAG Core Liquid E360 CPU cooler and see how it does when it's given the task of cooling a blazing fast but also a power hungry CPU, the 13900K. The cooler was sent over to me by MSI so shout out to them. Now even though it's a review sample, I wasn't paid for this review, there aren't any review guidelines or anything like that, they basically said we have this new cooler and want you to check it out. So I did. Now starting us off, I just wanted to do a quick unboxing to show you guys what you can expect. The packaging here is pretty typical, you've got a picture of the cooler on the front, some information on the sides in regards to specifications, information on the back pertaining to features, and that's really about it. Opening up the box, you get three 120mm fans which aren't installed, mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD sockets, along with a tube of thermal paste, and then the cooler itself. Let's move on to the design and aesthetics of the AIO. The version that was sent over to me is the 360mm radiator version, also known as a triple rad, as you can mount three 120mm fans to it, or six in total for a push-pull configuration. The radiator has a fairly standard construction, but it's built really well and feels like good quality. The radiator is made of aluminum, which is known for its excellent heat dissipation properties, and it didn't have a cheap feeling. The unit measures 394mm in length, is 119mm wide, and is also 27 millimeters thick, so it should fit in the vast majority of cases that have a spot for a triple rad without any issues. The radiator is designed with a split pathway with 12 lanes to help rapidly dissipate heat. You can also see it has a fairly standard fin density. What is also included on the radiator is a fill port, which I think is really convenient so that the user can do some future maintenance or if they need to refill the cooler, but it also has a void warranty sticker on it, so you're gonna have to check with your regional laws if those are enforceable, so beware. MSI claims that the tubes are evaporation proof. I don't really have a way to test this because it's one of those long-term claims, but the tubes seem to be wrapped in a nylon type of material with multiple layers, and they have also reinforced the plastic tubing with a mesh to improve its durability. Just like we saw with the radiator, they seem really well built, and I didn't see anything that looked like it could be problematic. Moving our way to the pump and water block, and I gotta say, this design here is really nice and clean. I mean, the overall look of the radiator is also quite attractive with the white aesthetic. It's got a chrome bezel, which you may or may not like, that's subjective, but what's also nice is that the water block's top can be rotated 270 degrees so that the logo is upright regardless of the orientation of the tubing. So I thought that was a nice touch because I actually have a radiator installed in my personal rig. The block is upside down because of the way I have it mounted in my case. The pump uses a three-phase ceramic motor which generates minimal vibrations for long-lasting operations. The pump is rated to run at up to 3000 RPM with a 10% deviation, and noise-wise is rated at 20 dBA, which under operation at full load, I actually couldn't hear the pump at all. No whining or anything. What MSI has also done differently compared to their last gen cooler is that they've enlarged the copper base plate by around 20% to ensure further heat dispersion and better coverage. This has also led to an increase in quantity and size of the micro channels so that the coolant can absorb heat more effectively along with a split path. Moving on to the included fans, these are rated to run at an operating range from 600 to 1800 RPM with up to 75 cubic feet per minute at max speed and 2.39 millimeters of H2O when it comes to static pressure. These fans are also fluid dynamic bearings, so that should ensure longevity, and this type of bearing does typically well with noise. The fan blades are constructed using acrylic and have a white translucent appearance as that will help enhance the overall RGB effects. The fans themselves look pretty nice, I also like how they have rubber pads on the corners to help reduce noise. Speaking of RGB here, this is what the fans look like with them illuminated, I gotta say they look pretty nice, and you can further adjust how they look or what kind of effects they are showing using their software. Here's what the pump looks like 
like with the RGB and I think it looks outstanding. Will definitely add a lot to the overall aesthetics of any build if you care about that kind of stuff. Now that we've talked about the cooler's design, specs, and aesthetics, we should move on to our test results. But before we do that, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of my test system and more specifically how I've set up the CPU. So we're going to be using my 13900K as mentioned at the start of the video. And I also wanted to highlight we are using Thermalrite's contact frame. The CPU isn't overclocked for these tests, just running stock, and the CPU V core was controlled by locking it at 1.23 volts, allowing for consistent behavior. I also wanted to mention we're going to be comparing this cooler against the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360 for a couple reasons. One, since it's one of the most popular and most recommended AIOs in the market, and two, it's around the same price when using listings from a retailer like Amazon.com. So I thought this will make the review a lot more interesting, comparing this new cooler which has entered the market to one that has already established its place as one of the best. Now, the motherboard we're using is the MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. We've also got 32 gigabytes of Team Group's T-Create memory running at 7200 mega transfers with two in timings, and the GPU is an MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio. For full system specs, check out the video description down below. The first test we're going to be taking a look at is Ida64, which I had ran for one hour, and both coolers were noise normalized. With both the coolers configured this way, we can see that the MSI cooler averaged 84C and peaked at 92, while the Arctic Liquid averaged 87C and peaked at 93. So it's not a huge difference, but the MSI does come out ahead, which is still a win nonetheless, so that's a great start so far. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the results from the same test, but with both coolers maxed out. Interestingly, both coolers max out their fans at 1800 RPM, while the pump on the Arctic maxes out at 2000 RPM, whereas the MSI E360 maxes out its pump at 3000 RPM. At full speed, we can see that both coolers perform identically. MSI averaged Averages around 81C and peaked at 88, whereas the Arctic Liquid averaged 82C and peaked at 88C. So it's basically a tie, but overall good results from both of them. Next, we're going to be taking a look at a game, and I used Shadow of the Tomb Raider for this test, and even though it's a fairly old title at this point, the reason why I like to use it for my CPU thermal testing is because it's a pretty well-threaded game and puts quite a load on the CPU. Here we can see pretty good and similar results from both coolers, where they both averaged 57C, but we can see the Arctic peaked at 71, while the MSI E360 peaked at 64. So there's a considerable difference there, but remember that's just the peak temp. Our temperature over time chart shows us it was just a spike that happened once. Otherwise, both coolers were exhibiting similar behavior. At full speed, we can see the MSI E360 pull ahead by a couple degrees when it comes to the average CPU package temp, and it peaked at 61C, which is a degree higher than the Arctic, but other than that, performance is almost about the same. So after taking a look at these results, I gotta say I'm quite pleased with the performance of MSI's MAG Core Liquid E360 AIO. It goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with what is known as one of the best AIOs on the market, and it's priced competitively. At the end of the day, it just comes down to which one you can find for cheaper in your region, and also other subjective things like appearances. One advantage that I'd say the MSI has over the Arctic is in the aesthetics department. The E360 just offers a much cleaner look, and the pump and water block are a lot more attractive with their RGB lighting effects. However, Arctic's P12 fans were noticeably quieter and more bearable at max speeds than the MSI fans, but with an adjustment to a fan curve, you could tone them down to tall levels, and since I'll be using this AIO on my test bench, I personally don't care about the noise at 100%. Another advantage that the Arctic has over the MSI cooler is that the pump also has a VRM fan, which can help lower the temps of VRMs in some situations, but in this case the VRMs and the Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi were nowhere close to concerning levels, e even under a heavy workload with the MSI cooler. Now if you're interested in purchasing the MSI MAG Core Liquid E360 cooler, I'll have some links down in the video description, and for that matter, any other part that was shown in the video will have links below as well. Alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this review. I think MSI did a good job with their Core Liquid E360 cooler. If you're looking to pick one up for your build and you've got an Intel or AMD Ryzen CPU, then it'll do a great job. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.